Axis Garage. All right, this is an unexpected video that we're making, and we got to tell you the backstory to get you to where we are today. Well, the situation was we were coming down from New York. Stephen is coming up from North Carolina in the Jeep, and we're going to meet in Lynchburg at the, the Big Dummy's house. So we're meeting at the Big Dummy, and we're going to all get in the car together, and we're going to go see Emily at a lacrosse game on the west ass end of Virginia, near the Tennessee and Kentucky border in that area. So we're about an hour or so before we hit Lynchburg. Stephen is about 120 miles south of Lynchburg coming up, and he calls us up saying that the, the Jeep is shaking and making noise, and he pulled over on the side of the highway. So we questioned him, making noise, what kind of noise, that whole thing, you know how that goes, it's difficult. Um, but we kind of thought that it was death wobble, possibly. He said he saw a little smoke, maybe, um, coming from this side, maybe like the wheel area. So we had him go over and feel the wheel, the steel wheel, and see if it was hot, like the wheel bearing was going, and then go compare it to the other side and feel that steel wheel, and they were the same. Nothing really hot, just, you know, warm on both sides. So that wasn't it. So we, we kind of went back to death wobble wasn't a hub we didn't think death wobble he has had um previously in the last six months or so um he's had a little a little bit of a, a vibration and we've been trying to figure it out and we haven't been able to you joins we thought at first that wasn't it but anyway we said that's yeah, probably death wobble try driving again see what happens so he gets in and drives again and he said it's really shaking it's really loud banging um, he can't really get over 10 and 12 miles an hour. He put us on FaceTime and we heard it and it sounded just like carnage. So we said, ride the shoulder. He had about 10 miles or so to the next exit. And he did, I was watching him on the, on the gyps and he had, he was doing about 11 or 12 miles an hour top speed. And he made it to the next exit, pulled off, got under it and took some pictures. And this is what we saw. So it sounded and felt like a, a front drive shaft U-joint. And he crawls under there, we tell him to move the drive shaft, and he's the back end with the drive shaft connects to the transfer case, he's moving it back and forth, but not because the U-joint went, because the transfer case split into two. It, it said, I, I want out of here, and it just went. And how that happens, I don't know. The, you know, the, the front drive shaft and the front axles in these Jeeps are spinning all the time but they're not spinning in the transfer case or driving in the transfer case. But I guess that chain must always be, I don't know, but something happened in the transfer case and it just split, the case split into two and you can see in the pictures that we'll put in here, we'll put some more pictures in. Okay, so Looking at the pictures, I don't know, can we take that drive shaft out and get him? He's got to drive another 120, 25 miles or so. So he found a little mom and pop shop where he was in the, in the middle of nowhere, North Carolina, pulled in and he put us on the phone with the guys at the shop and we said, hey, we know it's a disaster under there, but can you guys pull the front drive shaft, cut the chain, and potentially can he drive just with the rear drive shaft the rest of the way? got 125 miles to go and the guy's like i don't think so he said i think because there's no fluid left in the trench case is split open that where the the front drive shaft oh no where, where the where the, the transfer case is sending power to the rear drive shaft that that connection needs to be lubricated and that's going to seize up in, in short time if he gets back on the highway and starts doing 60 miles an hour to go that distance so we're like all right now i don't know whether or not that's correct um, I couldn't wrap my head around it on the road, but we said, well, he can't drive now. So we called AAA, and I have AAA for all the kids. We AAA'd it and got him a, a flatbed going to him to bring him 125 miles north. And I got the AAA gold, so they cover 100 miles of towing. So we had to pay the last, and it turned out to be 19 miles. Had to pay the last 19 miles. So in the meantime, what are we going to do? Well, <laughs> We start calling U-Hauls. Now we're an hour north of Lynchburg and we start U-Hauling in the Lynchburg area. And U-Hauls got some great 
car transport trailers. You know, those all aluminum ones, they're light, they got their own brakes and everything. But what do we find? We find the oldest, the oldest steel U-Haul uh, trailer that is left in service in the country. Yep, that's what we found. But we got one, so we got a trailer. And of course, the trailer wasn't at like a U-Haul a, a store, it was at an appliance store. And we don't have anything with us. We don't have straps, we don't have receiver balls. So we said to them, we said, do you have receiver balls for sale? Because at U-Hauls, this is like 20 bucks. Because every time you need an emergency trailer, you never have a receiver and ball. And they said, no, we don't have any. So let's go up the road to a Napa and we get the cheapest one they have because we got a stack of these at home for every time we have to rent a, a trailer in an emergency because we don't have one with us and 50 bucks. So we got the trailer, we got a $50 ball. We just need straps. And we and the straps were like ridiculous, dude. We wound up getting three of those 27 foot yellow straps because they're like $12 each as opposed to a set of four, which is like $75 or something like that. So we got the cheap yellow straps, we got a ball, and we're gonna take Steven's Jeep and bring it back to New York so that we can fix it. We did contemplate, we did contemplate finding a, uh, a transfer case locally and throwing it in before we left for New York. This is the, at the end of the weekend that we were staying here, um, but we couldn't find one. So we couldn't do a wacky video of us swapping out a transfer case with minimal tools. Uh, but we gotta get this loaded up on the trailer and hopefully we'll get some real good video and pictures of once it's up on the trailer of the carnage that that happened in there We're gonna get the truck and trailer set up and we'll be right back all right, so while I was getting ready to, to move the cars and Set up the trailer. I noticed something interesting and Steven asked me if it was is that good or bad? And I'm like, ah, I don't know. I don't know what it is if it means anything at all, but what I did notice was that you can look down here under the front differential I got an oil stain and that's fresh so I got fluid leaking out of the front differential and it's it's only been here um, a day which it, that's a lot of fluid for a day you know a lot of times especially old Jeeps you know the whole the differentials will be wet but they wouldn't be actively dripping fluid. This is actively dripping. So I'm wondering, did something in the front diff break? Lock up the the shafts, or I don't know. That makes sense on why I felt it in the front tire. That makes because Steven says he felt vibrations in the front tire, but when, when a drive shaft is binding up at the transfer case, that could, that could extend everywhere. You could feel it all over the, the vehicle. I don't know if that means something. I mean, how is the cover gasket affected by the transfer case splitting in half vibrations i don't know maybe the, the maybe the the constant vibrations of you driving um you know shook that differential housing so much that oil started leaking out of the cover gasket i, I don't know i don't know if one has to do with the other maybe it doesn't have to do with anything could have been just when it cracked and i was driving and i was still it rotating be, but it, that's gear oil not not um Transfer case. But I'm saying whatever's in the transfer case, in the transfer case, ATF or, when it was or 1030. I don't know. Rotating on the skid plate. No, that but just, that's all the way back there. But I'm saying it's connected to the differential. It's connected, yeah, but it's still spinning. Why is it, it could have, now? But it could have just been from that the uh, vibrations. No, from when it cracked and it was just sitting there, and no. it was trying to. It yeah, could have tweaked something. It could have tweaked something in there. I don't it know. It could have tweaked something. I think it did tweak something. I don't know. But with depth, so the front cover is going to have to come off, and hopefully we don't have carnage in there as well. Put in four wheel drive. <laughs>
you're tight over here. All right, well, the dummies are getting the trailer on. His are carnage. You need to have Steven do it? I don't want to. Do we have to, well, you're going to break the 10,000 pound strap? I don't think that so. That don't look good okay. over there. It's going Steven. around the back. And that's what the transfer case looks like from the back. And the inside. Wow. I never knew what the inside looked like. And that's what the inside looks like. Yeah. I didn't know there was a chain. Like this. Just hold it right there. All right. So for a close-up view, Cock it's balls. both both sides of the transfer case. Both the front and the rear housing broke. The whole thing split in half completely. This is hysterical. Look at this. That's the whole thing. How does that happen? You know when a girl goes, I just started hearing that noise. Well, I felt the vibration three months, two months ago. How does that happen, though? Grammy How does the whole thing split in half and the drive shaft can keep spinning, which means the chain's still turning? This is ridiculous. I don't understand how this happens. Weak things break. All right, so we got the Jeep loaded up on the trailer on the oldest U-Haul trailer that is in service in America today. And we're gonna pull it back up to New York and try to figure out um, what happened. Well, do we even care? I don't know. We'll try to figure out what happened, but we'll get a new transfer case or someone else's used transfer case in it so that we can start using it again. And we gotta get Steve-O in something to get him back down to school. We'll be on the next video. Thanks for watching.